good evening. Um, so I'd like to thank my teachers, Dr. Namita and Dr. Rajesh for this opportunity today. Um, I'll be sharing my experience on dealing with hot cataracts with the MyLoop and the Artivo 800 by Zeiss. Now, we all come across scenarios like these in our clinical practice. Uh, terrifying cataracts such as these can give us sleepless nights before the surgery. Uh, dense cataracts, they can be a struggle right from the initial chop and just through every step of nuclear disassembly, uh, especially when they have a dense leathery posterior plate that just refuses to come apart. Uh, it poses a challenge in further division of the nucleus and in emulsifying those pieces further. Now, this is where the my loop comes in. Now, with the my loop, we have a device and a technique that makes these hard cataracts no more challenging than any of our other routine cataract surgeries. And we can accomplish this without using any ultrasound or laser energy. We can easily divide the nucleus into two or four pieces as we desire. The only prerequisite is that there should be adequate zonal support before the surgery. The Milo features a retractable, micro-thin, super-elastic, self-expanding nitinol filament, which has a 300 micron diameter. Fully expanded, it has a horizontal diameter of 10 and a half millimeters and an anterior posterior height of five and a half millimeters, which is more than enough to engulf even the largest nuclei. Once fully retracted, the loop has a diameter of one and a half millimeters and can be easily inserted through a 2.2 millimeter incision. Now let's talk about how to use the MyLoop. This is the recently refreshed MyLoop that has a compressible rubber sleeve at the neck of the nozzle. It's very convenient to operate with just one hand and as can be seen here, it has a very smooth mechanism of movement. It is best to hold the MyLoop like a pen and move the slider with your index finger. The older design of the MyLoop had a black mark on the nozzle. And once inserted, the black mark had to be aligned with the incision. And it is important to maintain this position as you retracted the loop. The mark served as a convenient guide, helping you align the point from where the filament expands with the center of the nucleus. So making sure that there's minimal movement as you retract the filament. With the refreshed design, the black mark has been removed. And instead, you can keep the rubber sleeve flush with the wound edge, and it reduces the chances of pushing the instrument too far in, and it eliminates the need to repeatedly visualize and reconfirm the position of the instrument and the mark. Next, the instrument is to be inserted with the loop oriented in the coronal plane. The edge of the capsule is gently tented up with the loop, and slowly the loop is expanded. Once the loop reaches the equator of the capsule, you gently rotate your hand clockwise, orienting the loop vertically in the sagittal plane and then retract. Now this particular step comes with a learning curve. This video shows my very first attempt at using the my loop. And after inserting the instrument, expanding the loop and trying to rotate it clockwise, I struggled with getting the loop over and around the center of the nucleus. I even tried to use the second instrument to help nudge the nucleus to the center, but with no success. After struggling for quite some time, I noticed that the loop had not completely encompassed the nucleus and rather it was pushing the nucleus away. I tried to expand the loop a little further and immediately you can see the nucleus moving and comfortably resting in the center of the loop. So learning from my mistake, in the very next case, I compensated by expanding the loop completely. And as can be seen, this allowed the loop to easily slide around the nucleus and engage it. But the oval expansion put stress on the capsule margin and stretched it to an oval shape, as can be seen over here in this video. So it is, it is, it is a little bit of an art to you know, monitor this continuously and make sure that you're not opening it too much. Because in this particular case, as I opened it too much, you can actually see the stretch on the capsule, the capsule excess margin and it became oval. So to get this just right, you start by expanding the loop gently till you reach the equator, then gently rotate the instrument clockwise, keeping track of any movement of the nucleus. If the nucleus begins to move, compensate for this by further expanding the loop until you see the reflex posteriorly and the nucleus is stable. Now, as you expand the loop and it crosses the equator and comes, sorry, 
As you expand the loop and it crosses the equator and comes posterior to the nucleus, it can be seen as a shiny reflex. Even in dense white cataracts, the reflex is still visible. Now this reflex is a very important guide to just make sure that the, the, the filament is in the correct plane. And further, it is very helpful in aligning it absolutely vertically to make sure that the filament goes all the way to the posterior pole before you relax, uh, retract the filament. So once you have it right in the middle, it increases, uh, reduces the chances of you know, tilting the nucleus and having the nucleus pop out of the bag and increases the chances of getting two absolute equal halves of the nucleus. Using a second instrument at the time is very helpful, particularly in these cases with very dense cataracts. It helps stabilize the nucleus as you're retracting the loop, because as the loop retracts, it tends to push the nucleus up and out of the capsule bag. And sometimes after dividing the nucleus, there can be a small isthmus of a few nuclear fibers between the two halves. Now, the second instrument, what it can do is it can allow you to dissect these fibers carefully and remove the my loop without causing any damage. So in this case, after uh, retracting the filament, there's still some fibers which are encompassing the my loop. So using the second instrument, you can sort of just gently dissect the fibers and then remove the my loop carefully. Now, after the nucleus is divided once, if you wish to further divide the nucleus into quadrants, the nucleus tends to rotate along with the loop as, you, as it expands around the nucleus. So it is helpful to compensate for this by first under rotating the nucleus before the second division. And you can also use the second instrument again to keep the nucleus stable at this point. Now, in certain challenging situations where you might not be able to divide the nucleus evenly in the first go, uh, you can easily proceed and first emulsify the smaller fragment. And then you can use the my loop, go back in, and then further divide the larger fragment into smaller pieces, and then proceed with fake emulsifying them. The my loop can be easily uh, redeployed to divide the nucleus at any stage of the surgery, irrespective of whether the nucleus is even in the interior chamber. So in my experience, the best part about the my loop has been that it has made surgery in these very dense cataracts far more predictable. Uh, I myself was very hesitant using it the first time. Uh, I was not sure how much force would be required to retract the filament and divide the nucleus. And I remember being completely shocked when it just cut through it like a warm knife through butter. There was nearly no perceivable resistance at the time of retraction. Uh, even though it appears quite traumatic in the video, I have never experienced a compromised capsular support in any case so far. Uh, even some of the case series that have been published have shown that the my loop could easily divide the nucleus in each and every case without compromising the capsule. The major reason for this is that the force is applied centripetally on the nucleus alone, not the capsule. Unlike shopping where you are stretching and where you're putting a stretching centrifugal force on the nucleus, which is further transferred onto the capsule also. And with dense cataracts, the most challenging part, which would sometimes be that leathery uh, posterior plate, uh, with the my loop, it transects that completely. And obviously it reduces the amount of phaco energy used. So it is an amazing tool for these very, very dense cataracts. Now, coming to the Artivo, as already discussed, uh, it is an evolution of the Lumera 700 with digital optics. And it comes with the 55 inch 4K display by Sony, which is possibly probably the best medical grade monitor that is available as of today. Now, as surgeons, we are very comfortable with the view provided by our operating microscope. So comfortable, in fact, that we never notice the tunneling effect produced by the microscope optics. It's only when we escape from the tunnel and experience operating on an entirely new platform that we realize the difference. Now, one of the significant advantages of moving over to digital optics is that the camera allows us to operate on much lower illumination, as already discussed. Uh, you can also, you can comfortably operate on only 20 to 30% of the illumination intensity as compared to maybe almost 100% on a conventional microscope. And again, as discussed, can reduce the chances of photocurtain uh, damage to patients and it makes it more comfortable for patients who are under topical anesthesia. Now, when you're frequently switching between the Lumera 700 and Artivo, and again, we've talked about this earlier today, that, uh, you know, uh, that the magnification level is higher. But the thing is, even at the same magnification levels across both the platforms, 
what you see is being a larger television, just the image formed on the screen is bigger. And that, as already mentioned, allows you to see a lot more detail and operate a lot more comfortably. Uh, there is no noticeable lag in the display. But again, only as, as Dr. Rajesh also mentioned, only rarely when the microscope is auto adjusting the image to changes in field illumination, when there's a lot of movement in the operating field, at that point, we can see some latency. However, since the surgical field and average background contrast does not change significantly during our surgeries, this lag is hardly ever noticed. Now, operating on the Artivo does not increase your surgery time as compared to conventional microscope. It is the same. Now, as far as the learning curve is concerned, uh, you know, there was different people went through different experiences. Personally, uh, I found it very easy from the very first case. Uh, the good thing is that as ophthalmologists, we are already very comfortable using microscopes. So our eye-hand coordination is already dissociated. We are able to coordinate our hand movements without ever having to look down at them. So the only adjustment that is required is a slight rotation of the head to look at the screen instead of the binoculars. Uh, now, the ergonomic advantages of the Artivo cannot be overstated. Now, occupational musculoskeletal disorders are common amongst ophthalmologists, with more than, the ha more than half the surgeons surveyed reporting neck and back pain. And interestingly, 15% of the surveyed surgeons had to actually curtail their work as a consequence of these problems. When viewing from the binoculars, due to the position of the operating chair, the patient's eye and the microscope eyepiece we find ourselves having to constantly bend forward to reach the eyepieces, leading to arch and strain on our backs. However, by viewing the mon on the monitor instead of the binoculars, we can sit more upright, keeping our back straight, improving comfort, eliminating the need to constantly bend forward, reducing strain on our backs. Another significant advantage that I've noticed with the heads up viewing is that normally we have to adjust the chair height so that our legs slide under the operating table our hands comfortably rest in the plane of the surgical field, and our eyes reach the eyepiece comfortably. Now with heads up surgery, I have more freedom to adjust the chair height as I don't have to worry about reaching the eyepieces or needing to lean forward constantly. So I can actually keep the chair height slightly lower, reducing stress on my lower back and making me more comfortable. One significant advantage, as already mentioned earlier, of the Artivo is that uh, it has hybrid mode. And this is unlike any of the other heads up platforms that are available right now. So if you're rotating and for any reason want to switch back to the Oculus, all you need to do is rotate this small knob on the side of the, on the, side of the microscope, remove your 3D glasses, and you can start viewing through the Oculus. But the greatest part is that everybody else in the OR can continue to view the 3D image on the monitor. You can almost seamlessly transition between heads up and Oculus. Although in my experience, I have never felt the need to switch to Oculus during a surgery. Another advantage of transitioning to the heads up viewing is that you no longer need to adjust all the different settings such as interpupillary distance or the refractive error or the high eye point position or the inclination of the binoculars when switching from one surgeon to the other. This dramatically improves comfort for all the surgeons using the OR and reduces the chances of a surgeon facing difficulty intraoperatively because someone forgot to change the settings to the surgeon's preference. Now, where heads up technology truly shines is in the process of training young surgeons. Some of the advantages offered are that the stereoscopic view is not limited to one resident at a time. It is also far more comfortable for the trainee assisting you, especially if there's a significant difference in height between the primary surgeon and the assistant. The advantages carry forward beyond the OR with the ability to demonstrate your surgeries in lectures with stereoscopic videos which can dramatically improve the ability to explain the nuances of certain surgical steps such as chopping during FACO. When we compared the complication rate between two groups of trainee residents, where one group performed all the surgeries on the Numera 700 and the other group performed all the surgeries on the Artivo 800. And we need notice fewer complications with the group operating on the Artivo. And one reason for this is that the trainer has a better view and can interview, intervene earlier as was already discussed, because switching between surgeons is easier and quicker. So you can help you uh, save time in salvaging the complication. Uh, trainee surgeons were able to perform complete surgeons from making incisions to hydrating them using only the heads up view, not needing to revert to the oculus even once during some of their very first few independent surgeries. This demonstrates the superior heads up visualization and comfort provided by the article.
Now, while we have talked a lot about the heads up technology, allowing you to stay connected to your surroundings during surgery, let's also talk about the Artivo's connectivity with the rest of Zeiss's cataract suite. Now, with digital investigations and operating platforms, connectivity and data transmission has become seamless. With Forum and EQ, you can securely access your patient's data from anywhere. This can help in reviewing surgical plans preoperatively, even at home. And particularly, this easy access to data is great for researchers and can improve their productivity by reducing the amount of time you spend in data aggregation. It also makes it much easier to retrieve data when you're planning or making your presentations. Now, from the patient's perspective, the workflow and their time spent going through different steps in surgical planning can be dramatically reduced. For example, if you're planning a patient for a thoracic IOL with a conventional platform, you would have to execute a minimum of six steps to complete the process. With digital operating tools and a completely connected platform, you can reduce that to only three steps, half of the traditional process. This can tremendously reduce patients' waiting time and increase your productivity. The Callisto on-screen markings, as we've already discussed, are much easier to view on the larger screen as compared to the eyepieces and can improve outcomes of your thoracic lenses. There are certain points that are being worked on and improved with the digital platform. For example, reflections from the operating microscope. There are solutions for, such, for these, such as low reflection instruments, which are being developed, and they can help reduce these distractions. But even otherwise, over time, you do get used to them. Now, while some artifacts on the ocular surface, such as Mebum, can pose a challenge with traditional microscopes also, they're a little better over here. There's just lesser glare that is in, induced by the camera system and the television. Uh, there are a few points one needs to consider when looking at uh, the digital microscope. Firstly, accommodating the large 3D monitor would require some modifications to your OT setup. Now, with high resolution recordings, you will need to upgrade your recording system and increasing storage for keeping these files. If your myopic Zeiss also does provide 3D glasses with inbuilt prescriptions, or you can even use these specially designed 3D glasses over your existing glasses. Although as we experienced uh, recently, if they break, it can be a little bit of a headache. The advantages of heads up viewing technology are best experienced rather than explained or studied. Now having have frequently switched between heads up and oculars over the last one year, I can definitely say that I prefer the comfort and visualization provided by the heads up technology. And over time, I'm sure scientific data will also be available to substantiate this. We need to understand that heads up technology opens the avenue to incorporate technologies into cataract surgery that were not possible with a traditional microscope. This technology is here to stay and adoption will surely continue to increase over time. Thank you.